Hi, I'm Ryan O'Quinn. I play Paul Holderfield. Paul's Promise is the incredible true story about a firefighter turned pastor who started an amazing ministry and church that is still going strong today. In the height of the civil rights movement of the 1960s, Paul, by his own admission, was a racist and a bigot, a ne'er-do-well. Watch you come down here next to me and pray through my list with me? You know how I feel about all that? Paul Holderfield Sr. had a Apostle Paul type conversion. I mean, it was one, one day he was the old Paul, and the next day he was the new Paul. And it's, I think, one of the reasons that he led 25 firemen to Jesus, mm -hmm. because they lived together, and they saw the old Paul, they saw the new Paul, he was, he was a living sermon. Daddy, he, he, I would say, Bub, a sermon heard is soon forgotten, but a sermon seen is never forgotten. Hmm. Think you had enough beer for breakfast this morning? Oh, so you gonna be my mama now too? For me, even just resonating with the story and the script and being part of Paul's promise was knowing my own mother prayed for me diligently. She used to call me all the time and would say, I have been praying for you. I'm believing what God is about to do in your life, you know, and that's something that has, the power of prayer actually changes the trajectory of our lives. And we see that in Paul's promise. We see that her faith, her prayer resonated and had a ripple effect in the lives of Paul and his entire family. You didn't come to talk about boxing, did you? No. Good. Jimmy was a, a very complex, but yet uh, well grounded in the face of segregation and, and just racial bigotry that, that he faced. He uh, never lost his belief, his faith, his appreciation of, of God. I ain't never gonna work with no colored in this department. Your dad had some folks in his ear when he told them what part of the city he wanted to go to. They'd say, Paul, you're gonna get you're gonna get killed down there. Now, they don't want you down there, and you're gonna get killed down there. And Daddy would say, you know, I'd rather get killed down here doing something for Jesus than, than to die in the cleanest hospital in Little Rock. Later on, that's we become such a blessing to the community. And the community, by the way, became such a blessing to us. And uh, he'd say, you know, we came in when they didn't want us, but we stayed till they couldn't do without us. Heavenly Father, the biggest wish on my heart, my boy, youngest, my Paul. Sure do appreciate your service today. How's your mama? Is that a friend of yours, Paul? No. <laughs> I don't know him. Mrs. Holderfield. The x-rays came back. And we saw some stuff. How long? A week, maybe less. Mama's in the hospital. I want you to do me a favor. Mm. I want you to take my prayer list with you to church on Sunday and pray for it. I respectfully decline. Have you considered you could go to church? Dear God, Paul, stubborn as I'm you, I also know you've got great things planned for him. The sit down between the chief of police and members of the black community ended in stalemate. You figure out just how many black fires you put out this morning? Go get it, boys! Oh, oh, yes. Come on! Go, go. We don't need you around here playing hero. And I ain't the one that needs safety. The world has gone crazy around us. You two closer than two peas in a pod when you were kids. Jimmy, who are all these kids? I can't think of one verse in the Bible that commands these kids to come here to eat. But I can think of a bunch that commands me to feed them. Dementia and hallucinations are going to keep getting worse. She's waiting on something. If she's still sticking around, I'm sure she's got a good reason. My mama is laying dying of cancer and ain't nothing I can do about it. I feel like I'm being choked out by smoke. God's going to change him. Don't you dare give up. Take my prayer list to church and pray for it. I promise. <laughs>